This is assignment three answers. So question one, given A, B, three, uh, A, B, C uh, matrices, find first is A plus B, and then C minus A, and then 3A and 4B plus 2C. So let's calculate the first one, A plus B. So A plus B is the summation of the two matrices. And as we said in the class, um, <clears throat> summation means you uh, add the corresponding location elements together. Right, so what is the corresponding location? Means uh, for the first row and the first column element of matrix A, you need to add the first row and the first column element of B. And then that will become the first row and the first column element of the new matrix. Right, so this becomes 7 plus 0. Right, we, we add the pairs together. So this minus one plus four, and then six plus three, and then nine minus two. Right, we simply add the pairs in the same location and to find the answer. So this should be uh, seven, three, nine, seven. Right, and for the subtraction, it's the same thing. We subtract the, the pairs in the same location. And for 3a, so 3a means we multiply all the elements of the matrix of the matrix with the scalar 3. Right? So that's 3 times 7, 3 times minus 1, 3 times 6, 3 times 9. So this is 21 minus 3, 18, 27. Right. And for the D, everything is the similar. So first we calculate for B. So that's 4 times 0, 4 times 4, 4 times 3, 4 times minus 2. So that's 4B. And then plus 2C. So 2 says 2 times 8, 2 times 3, 2 times 6, 2 times 1. And then we add the pairs together and find the answer. Right. So this should be, uh, so this is 0 plus 16, 16, 16 plus 6, that's 22, 12 plus 12, so that's 24, minus 8 plus 2, so that's minus 6. We find the answer here. So second one, given A, B, A, B, C, is A, B defined? If it is, then calculate A, B. So A, A is a 3 by 2 matrix, right? It has three rows and two columns, so it's 3, three by 2. And the B is a square matrix, it's 2 by 2. C is also 2 by 2. So A, B has to be conformable for them to be multiplied, right? But 3 is 3 by 2, B is 2 by 2. So the number of columns of A equals to the number of rows of B. So this 2 equals to this 2. So A, B is defined, or we can calculate A, B, right? And uh, the resulting matrix, or the the a b a times b, um, the multiplic uh, multiplication matrix should be a three by two matrix, right? Okay, so we calculate a b here. So a b a times b equals to two eight three zero five one times two zero. Uh, 3, 8. Right. So that is, we know that it's a 3 by 2 matrix. So it has 3 rows and 2 columns for the resulting matrix. And for, for the first element here, we should use the first row and the first column. First row of the first matrix and first column of the second matrix. 
to find the inner product. Uh, so this should be um, 2 times 2 plus 8 times 3. Right, so that's the first element. And then for the second element here, it should be using the first row here and the second column of the second matrix. So that's 2 times 0 plus 8 plus uh, times 8. Right. For the um, for the second row and the first column element here, we should use the second row and the first column. Right. Second row of the first matrix, um, first first column of the second matrix. So that's three times two plus zero times three. And for the fourth one, we should use the second row and the second column. So that's 3 times 0 plus 0 times 8. And for the uh, fifth element here, because it's a, it's, it lies in the third row and the first column, so we should also use the third row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix and find the inner product. So that's 5 times 2 plus 1 plus times 3. All right, so the last one, it should be 5 times... 0 plus 1 times 8. So that's how we result in matrix. So this should be um, 28, so that's 64, that's 6, that's um, 0, that's 10 plus 3, that's 13, and that's 8. Right. So this is A times B. It's a 3 by 2 matrix. But for BA, B is a 2 by 2 matrix, A is a 3 by 2 matrix. The, co uh, the columns of the, the number of columns of B is not the same as the rows, the number of rows of A. So BA is not defined because it's not conformable. Right? We cannot calculate BA. And a BC is defined. Because B is 2 by 2, C is also 2 by 2. The number of columns of B equal to the number of rows of C. So we can calculate BC. And CB is also defined, right? Because C is 2 by 2, B is also 2 by 2. So it's defined. So we'll calculate um, BC. So BC... So B is um, 2038, 2038 times C is 7263, 7263, we calculate this, right? Because the resulting matrix is also a 2 by 2, right, a square matrix. So there are four elements to calculate. The first element here, uh, in the first row and the first column is to use the first row and the first column of the two matrix. Right, so that's 2 times 7 plus 0 times 6. The second element here should be using the first row and the second column. So that's 2 times 2 plus 0 times 3. And for the third one, you should use the second row and the first column. So 3 times 7 plus 8 times 6. The last one is 3 times 2 plus 8 times 3. So that is uh, 14, 4, uh, 69. So that's 30, right? Yes. Yes. So this is our uh, matrix for BC. And for CB, you do the same thing, but you, I mean, you, you change the two matrices, right? So C becomes the first matrix and B becomes the second matrix and do the same calculation as before and find out the CB. And you may will find that, okay, uh, BC is not equal to CB because we changed the order of the matrix, right? So it's not like the uh, the number algebra is matrix al algebra. So BC is not equal to CB here. Okay. 
for question three. Find the product matrices in the following. Okay, so A, um, we have a lot of zeros here, so it's really simple to calculate. So this is a three by three matrix times a three by two matrix, uh, a three by three. So the resulting should be a three by two matrix, right? So the first element here should be the first row in the first column. So 0 times a plus 2 times 0 plus 0 times 3. So that's 0. Right? If, if you want me to write down the process, so it should be 0 times 8 plus 2 times 0 plus 0 times 3. Because we have a lot of zeros here, so everything can be can be zero right so for the second term it should be zero times zero using the first row and the second column here plus two times one plus zero times five so the third one is three times eight right we use the second row in the first column plus zero times zero plus four times three and then the fourth one is 3 times 0 plus 0 plus times 1, and then plus uh, 4 times 5. Right. And um, the fifth one is the third row and the first column. So that's 2 times 8 plus 3 times 0 plus 0 times 3. And the last one should be 2 times 0 plus 3 times 1 plus 0 times 5. Okay, so this is our solution. You can calculate yourself and find that this is just the answer here. Okay, so for uh, B, we should we do the same thing, right? So you see the first row, first column, and then first row, second column, and the second row, first column, and the second row, second column. And for the C, it's like a 2 by 3 here. It's 3 by 1. So the resulting matrix is a 2 by 1 little matrix. Right? So it should be um, the first row, first column, and then the second row, first column. Right? So it's first row, first column, and 0 times z is just a 0. Right. And the second row, first column is 4x plus 2y minus 7z. So this is our answer. So it's 2 by 1. And for the last one, this is a 1 by 3. This is 3 by 2. So the resulting matrix is a 1 by 2 matrix. Right. So 1 by 2. So we have one term here, one term here. So the first term should be using the first row and first column. So that's 7a plus c, right? And then the second element is to use the first row and the second column. So that's 2b plus 4c. Okay, so we have 1 by 2 matrix. So that's question 3. And the question 4 uh, verify that a plus b and then plus c equals to a plus the summation of b and c. So here you can calculate yourself, right? So this should also equal to a plus b plus c. Uh, simply plus or add um, the, the the pairs, no, not pairs right now, but add the three numbers in the same location together. And so, for example, the 5 comes from 3 minus 1, then plus 3. Right, so this is 5. So you simply add um, the, the same location elements together to find out the answer. Whether or not you calculate a plus b first or b plus c first, it doesn't matter. Right, because the resulting matrix is also is always uh, multiply, uh, sorry, is always adding the three numbers together. So the order doesn't matter. And for the second one, the subtraction is the same, right? The same thing as the plus, the same thing as the summation. And so, a, so the minus one, for example, here comes from 
uh, 3 minus 1 and then minus 3. Right, so we first add the AB pairs together and then minus the corresponding C element here. Right, we just change the plus to the minus sign um, in the second one. But anyway, you can verify yourself. Okay. So the idea is just that the order doesn't matter. So this is also equal to A plus B and then minus C. So question five. So first calculate AI. So A is a two by three matrix. B is 3 by 1, X is 2 by 1. So in order to find out what is AI, so the I matrix should be also, should be a 3 by 3 identity matrix, right? Because A is 2 by 3. And you have to make sure that the color, the number of columns of A should equal to the number of rows of I. So the number of rows of I should be also 3, right? And we know that the identity matrix is um, square matrix. So the rows and the columns should have the same dimension. So the I matrix should be a three by three matrix, or we can write it's I3. Right, so I3 is 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Right, so this is a three by three identity matrix. And if we multiply any matrix, post-multiply or pre-multiply um, the matrix with an, with an identity matrix, then the result should also be the matrix itself. It doesn't matter the order, or it will not change the original matrix. Right? You can consider the identity matrix as number one in the number algebra, because number one times any number is the number you itself right so here this should also be matrix a and again second one should be matrix a but second one we pre-multiply the identity matrix in front of a so a is a two by three matrix so we have to make sure that uh, the number of columns of a should equal to the number of rows of of A. Right now the number of rows of A is 2. So we have to make sure that um, the identity matrix should have two columns. Right? So I should be I2 in the second case. Right? Because we want to make IA conformable. So I should be a two by two matrix, such that this two is equal to this two here. So I two should be this form. And the, uh, the third one, I times X. So X is a two by one matrix. If we want to make the I conformable with X. So, uh, this, so this I should be, two by two, right? Again, the I2 matrix, in order to make the I and X conformable. But the result is the I, is the X vector itself. Right. And the last one, X prime I. So X prime is a one by two matrix or one by two vector, right? and uh, it times i. So in order to make this two conformable, so i should again be a two by two matrix, such that the number of columns of I, x prime equals to the number of rows of i. So i should again be um, of this form. Okay, b, indicate the dimension of the, uh, sorry, uh, B is to calculate the four things here. So first is A, B. So we know that A is 2 by 3, B is 3 by 1. So the resulting matrix is a 2 by 1 matrix. And it should come from first using the um, 
first row and the first column of B, and then the second row and the first column of B. So that is minus 9 plus 5 times 6 is 30, plus 7 times 0, that's 0. And then, so this 0 plus, sorry, minus 12, right, because we use the minus 2 times 6, and plus 0. So this should be 21 and a minus 12, which is your answer here. Right, 21 and then minus 12. And then AIB should be equal to AB, right? Because you can consider the identity matrix as number one. So you can multiply any i's in your equation, but it doesn't affect the results. Right? And then the third one, the fourth one, should also have the same uh, results because we can get rid of the i because we can consider the i as the uh, as number one, right? So i times any matrix is the matrix itself. So we can get rid of the i here. And x prime a should be x1 and x2, right? x prime times the a. So this is a one by two matrix. This is a 2 by 3 matrix. The resulting matrix is a 1 by 3 matrix, right? 1 by 3. Three numbers here, here, and here. This is a 1 by 3 matrix. So the first number should come from using the first row, or the only row of x prime, and the first column. So this should be minus x1. So the second one is to use the first column and the second, uh, sorry, the first row here and the second column here. So that's 5x1 minus 2x2. And the third one is to use the first row and the third column here. So that's 7 times x1 plus 4 times x2. So this is the result here. Okay. And C was the dimension of the norm matrix resulting from each of the following. So norm matrix times uh, any kind of matrix is the another norm matrix. All right. But uh, maybe the two norm matrices are different, but they have to be a norm matrix. That's what we learned in the class. So if we pre-multiply A by a 5 by 2 norm matrix, so A is a um, 2 by 3 matrix, right? If we pre-multiply a 5 by 2 null matrix, then the result, so first it's conformable, right? Because this 2 equals to this 2 here. And the resulting null matrix should be 5 by 3. I've right? simply combined the number here with the number here, and that will be the new dimension of the resulting matrix. So this is no matrix is a five by three. And second, post multiply a by a three by six no matrix. So again, it's conformable, and the resulting matrix should be two by six, right? <laughs> should be two by six, and. Okay, and we pre-multiply B by a 2 by 3 null matrix. So B is a 3 by 1. It's conformable because the 3 here is the same. And the resulting matrix should be 2 by 1, right? 2 by 1. So this 2 by 6, this is 2 by 1. The last one, we post-multiply X by a... 1 by 5 null matrix. So x is a 2 by 1 matrix. So these two ones are conformable. And the resulting null matrix should be 2 by 5. Right? 2 by 5. Okay. Okay. So for question 6, we find the transpose of A, B, and C. 
So transpose just means that we interchange the columns and rows together. Or is for a square matrix, it means that we flip the matrix by this principal diagonal or by the diagonal from the top left to the bottom right. Right, so if we flip A here, so it will become diagonal elements are the same, but we change the uh, position of the corresponding location uh, or the corresponding pairs uh, in the matrix. So here it becomes four, and here it becomes it becomes minus one. So that's called uh, the transpose. Or we can say that the four lies in the first row and second column of the original matrix. Right, the first row and second column. So this should be A12 in the original matrix. So if it becomes a transpose in A prime, so the four should lies in A21 prime, or it should lies in the second row and the first column of the new matrix A transpose. Right, we just uh, uh, interchanged the the rank or the the order of the the number of rows and columns, or the position of the rows and the columns uh, of the original element. We interchanged uh, we in, we interchanged the element from A one two to A two one, right? So we change the position of the rows and numbers here. And find out a new one, and uh, the 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 reason why the principal diagonal elements still remain the same position is that, for example, for the element three here, in the original matrix A, its position is a two two, right? The second row and the second column, and if we interchange the two with these two, it's still a two two, right? It's still two and two. So in the new matrix A transpose, it should still lies in the second row and second column, although we have already interchanged or uh, changed uh, the two numbers here, right? So that's why uh, the diagonal elements still remain the same. But other elements, they interchange their, their positions accordingly.